The oceans cover approximately 71% of our planet. They provide for our air, our marine life, and for our food source. Without our oceans, Earth's climate and weather patterns would drastically change, ultimately leading to an uninhabitable planet. Unfortunately, as decades go by and carbon dioxide emissions rise, our Earth's oceans have become acidic, a process referred to as ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is defined as the reduction in pH of the ocean over an extended period of time. It's reported on the pH scale between 0 to 14. Before industrialization, the pH of the ocean was 8.2. After industrialization, that pH dropped 0.1 units. And you might think 0.1 units is on a drastic change, but the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. So it's used for a larger range of quantities and has a tenfold increase in acidity. So for example, pH 3 is 10 times more acidic than pH 4 and 100 times more acidic than pH 5. Now this reduction in pH is happening because of carbon dioxide emissions. This graph made from the NOAA, which is an organization comprised of climate scientists and academic institutes from around the world, made a graph from, that represents 1750 to 2020 atmospheric carbon dioxide emissions. As you can see, the blue line, atmospheric carbon dioxide, and gray line, which is the carbon dioxide emitted from us, rises simultaneously. And in between 1840 and 1870, you can see there is a change in, um, there's a rise in carbon dioxide emissions. And along with that, pH of the ocean has reduced. This graph shows past, present, and future predictions of ocean chemistry. And as carbon dioxide rises around 1850, you can see pH of the ocean has reduced. Now, this is ultimately because of how carbon dioxide dissolves into our oceans due to photosynthesis. And it was, natural, it was deemed that this phenomenon would be a natural solution to global warming, as this natural store would reduce the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and would reduce um, climate temperatures from rising. But when seawater com um, combines with carbon dioxide, a chemical reaction occurs that ultimately reduces the ocean pH. As high schoolers, you probably think that this phenomenon has no effect on us since we don't live by a beach. But ultimately, ocean acidification affects calcium organisms and carbon-based shells such as oysters and sea urchins, basically any organisms with shells, and slows their growth and um, dissolves their structures. This affects high, um, f organisms higher up in the food chain that feed on these organisms. It can affect the commercial fish stock and eventually lead to job loss. Now, the main goal in tackling ocean acidification ultimately comes down to reducing our carbon dioxide emissions. By holding manufacturers and producers accountable to carbon dioxide emissions, we could limit the harm in marine life. And I know, like I said, we're all high schoolers and we don't have time or we don't have the opportunity to go to court and protest and um, protest that these manufacturers are emitting these carbon dioxide. But it's not only them that emit CO2. Every day in our lives, we emit carbon dioxide into the air. A two mile car trip produces two pounds of carbon dioxide into the air. Ultimately, we could ride our bikes instead, or walk to the park instead of taking our cars, or even carpool to places where we wanted to go with friends for a long road trip. Now, ocean acidification is usually hidden by the impacts of carbon, um, carbon dioxide, usually referred to as the doppelganger of global warming because of how both processes are, contrib are, are contributed to global carbon dioxide emissions. But, since, um, but since even if awarenesses of this phenomenon is reduced low, the scientific evidence and understandings of these 
um, this phenomenon ultimately reflects and shows how much of an effect this has on negative marine lives. I had the opportunity to do an experiment on this during my AP research presentation project in Mr. Horn's class. And in my experiment, I conducted 10 trials that emitted different carbon dioxide levels into different aquariums. And I put algae to have a photosynthetic organism to have carbon dioxide actually dissolve into the aquarium. And my results showed that the more carbon dioxide that gets emitted into the aquarium, the, there is a more reduction in the pH of the ocean. So as years go by, if I go back to this graph, um, Okay, as years go by, and as you can see, in 2100, the pH of the ocean will be drastically reducing to an acidic level. Now, this is a major problem to marine life and ultimately affects everyone around us. Thank you.